What is going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Now it's super early on Saturday morning. Um, I'm going to Folkestone today, all the way down by the coast, to film um, Craig's Stingray and Arowana setup. So it should be a pretty cool video to be fair. And also there is a, um, a friend of his that lives opposite his. He's got some really cool reef tanks. So we're gonna literally pop into his house, film that, and I'll do another separate video of his reef tanks. But um, let me show you the snakeheads because they're actually out. It's like six o'clock in the morning right now. There's my biggest snakehead at the back and the smaller one has just tucked himself over there. You can see his tail hanging out. So I rarely get to see these snakeheads. So this is, this is really cool for me to see. Check him out, it's absolutely sick. But anyway guys, I'm gonna quickly go and yam some breakfast, get my lunch ready, my camera ready in the bag and uh, get in the car and go. Check this aquarium out. Absolutely epic, man. So Craig, let's talk about the sizes then, mate. What, what sort of size is this tank? Right, so we've got seven foot length. We've got 27 and a half inch width, as yeah. I said earlier, because that's all I could get through the front door. Yeah. Uh, we're 24 high. Had it bespoke made by MD Aquatics, which was kind of the cheapest way of doing it. Yeah, because you've done the stand yourself as well, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, made the stand myself. That was the biggest freshwater sump that they'd do. Yeah. So it's a four foot. 24 deep. In total, I think we're running about just underneath 1200 litres. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big system when you add it all up, isn't it? Yeah. You know? From the fish you've got in it, like, obviously later on you're going to get yourself a bigger tank, aren't you? But these are doing fine in there now. That's it. I don't think I want any more fish. I want to see all these grow up and get big. Yeah. So, as I was saying to you earlier, the next tank. Hopefully I can go to a 12. If I go to a 12, I should just be, at, be able to house them for four rows. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, which, how many, what you got? I've got this is a female, isn't it? Yeah, so that's a female, albino pearl. Got a little bit of nip around the edges. I bought her especially now, before these guys got big, I thought I wouldn't have been able to put them together. Yeah. So the same thing happened to the last, the smallest black diamond. Got a little bit nipped but I had to make the leap of faith and get them all in there together so that they could grow up sort of thing. Yeah, and then they sort of know each other, didn't they? I've, yeah. I've found out with fish as well, especially with like the bottom dwellers, yeah. bottom clown lunches, with these guys, you know? When you grow them all up together, they don't sort of go for them. Yeah. It's, it's a good way of doing it. These are beautiful, mate, absolutely beautiful. I love the tank with no substrate. Yeah. It looks, just looks crystal clear, doesn't it, you know? It's nothing moving or nothing, it's just all, Completely clear, isn't it? There's no dead spots and no dead corners. I yeah. mean, it does get algae. It gets water changed once a week. Mm. It does get algae on the grass in the corners, but nothing like when I used to have two inches of substrate and you'd go and churn it up and it'd make it all cloudy. Mm. So I do think it is helping. Yeah, yeah so if, if anything sort of sits at the bottom, it gets blown straight into the sump, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. As soon as they mess, within probably five minutes, it's gone. Mm. That's perfect. And it's, it's good for the rays as well. It's obviously if they drop their barbs and stuff, yeah. you can find them, can't you? That's Get them straight out straight away. It's probably the perfect tank for rays, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got the pearl. You've got one pearl and you've got three BDs over here, That's haven't you? That's it. So the big one's a female. The middle size one with the big spot is the boy. Yeah. And his claspers are just about rolling at the moment. If you see them at the back of his tail, yeah. they're just about coming out, probably about an inch long at the moment. Mm. So he's starting to get starting to get there. And then the last one I bought, another female, just loves gliding up the top. Yeah, they've all got their own personality, haven't yeah. they? And you've got a couple of discus in there as well, haven't you? That's it. These are nice little fish, aren't they? Well, say little, they're big, aren't they, really? As discus go. So the story with the discus is I had, I, I started a discus tank before I had the rays. Yeah. Every time I was buying one, I was losing another one. Right. And then I spoke to a couple of people online. Yeah. And they said that the discus that come from different places, mm. so you can get Stenka, you can get ones that are bred in England, they yeah. carry a, a different viral load. Right, so, okay. So what I should have done is brought all my babies together mm. and let them grow up and grow out, but I weren't. I was going to the shop, I was like, oh, that one's nice, putting one in and then yeah. losing one I'd have for six months, thinking, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, what, what, a couple of weeks after or a week yeah, after? Yeah, yeah, within a couple of weeks, not really much signs on it, but yeah, they go down pretty pretty quick, they do. Mm. 
So the best way to get the discus is to buy them all together. All together yeah. as babies, yeah. they all yeah. grow up. Yeah, so I found out the hard way because it was expensive. Yeah, expensive I bet it was. lesson that was. I've, I've kept discus before, mate, and I, I didn't have any luck with them, if I was you. Yeah. We've got, re we got really hard water down where we are, so. Okay. What's your water like down there? Is it soft? No, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So with the water, when I, from the big black diamond, I got told 30% RO is what their water change was. So hmm. I went and bought myself an RO machine. I got all my buckets and I was doing it. And I was doing it until I went to get the second one. And the guy says, you're making it so hard. You're trying to chase the parameters so yeah. much. He said, get them used to your tap water. Hmm. And I was reluctant. I was like, these fish are quite expensive. Yeah. But obviously he knew a lot more than me. And they, they didn't like it for probably only two weeks. Two weeks, a little bit, not really moving much, didn't want to eat much. Yeah, it's scary though, isn't it? Yeah, it is scary. And now it's just tap water. Yeah. Yeah, full on, full on tap water, but I did step it up. When he was saying how much water change you do, I was doing maybe 30, mm. 50 was a good. Yeah. Now, now it's 80 every week. Yeah, it's good, mate, it's good. Do you put, uh, Warm water in it is what it's yeah, comes yeah, straight yeah. in. So That's I'll, good. I've got a big dry, it probably takes me about three and a half hours. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm lazy, mate. I put cold straight in, I do, in my tank. So, touch with, to be fair, I've been all right, you know? So, yeah. it's, it's just the way I've always done it, but you, you're doing it a good way. Well, it's clearly working for you, isn't it? Well, well I figured that, so they're running at 27.3. I put in, I get a 100 litre drum, I put a 33 litre mark on it, so they get one third hot water, and mm. then I switch straight into cold water. Right. So I figured a way of doing it, rather than trying to chase it coming out of the tap, mm. so a third hot water, two thirds cold water, makes it 27 exactly. That's good, and once they're into their routine every week, they know what's coming, yeah, don't they, you it. know? And oh, the fish just get used to it, don't they? Yeah. I mean, they are all getting quite friendly. I try and stroke the arowana like you do, yeah, but he yeah. ain't interested in it whatsoever. Ah. So the Mian goes quite close to him, he shoots off. Wait, but, wait until it gets a bit bigger. Yeah. And it's good with the tank as you've got it now, because there's always something going on. So if someone's cooking or something and you're sitting there having your dinner, yeah. they're getting used to you, you yeah. know? It's very important, especially with the arowana, because they can be quite skittish. Yeah. And you don't want them bang, 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 and then ramming into the rocks or the lids, yeah. you know? Yeah, I learned the hard way. Dad bought him home, jumped out of the box. Did he? Chasing him around the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, he looks all right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely beautiful fish, mate. So what, what type is it? Do you want to talk us through so it? So he's, he's a Tong Yang, which I don't know too much about him, so it's just from what the guy in the shop told me. I went to buy a Banjar Red, which is quite a low grade. Yeah. Um, and he said I could have this Tong Yang for the same money. So he's a Banjar Red crossed with a crossback, apparently. Mate, he's beautiful, isn't it? You give that fish a year, Honestly, it's gonna pop, and you're gonna be amazed by the colours on it. Because when you when you first get them, they look a bit yeah. Don't they? You think, what am I paying for? You yeah, know, what? A lot of yeah. Them. And and then you give it a year or a year and a half, and you're like, okay, I can see what I've, what I pay for now. You know. Yeah. But you can see it's a beautiful specimen. Lovely clear eyes, isn't he? Yeah. yeah stunning, mate. Well, you know that's what I'm into. I'm, I'm yeah. a massive fan of them. You know, so. <laughs> Right, let's talk about your sump then, bud. So what, what's going on in your sump? Right, so on the sump, we've got four filter cups coming in on the right-hand side. We've got a 15,000 litre an hour pump feed in the overflow. Yeah. Um, we've got 20 litres of biomedia sitting in the middle. Then it goes over to the return. It's got a heater in it and then back in. Yeah, nice and simple. It's yeah. working now, isn't it? I was scared of it because there's so many different ways yeah. There were so many different people that put different things in it. So the filter, the filter sponge area, yeah. was supposed to be for like the K1 biomedia to tumble around in. Right, yeah. But I also got told about how noisy that was by putting the air pump in. Yeah. Obviously I've got it in my front room and I wanted it to be as quiet as possible. Mm. So the guy who I went and got the second stingray from, he didn't have anything like that because he was in the front room as well. Right, so okay. He, he said, you don't need it. He said, as long as you're biomedia, you've got enough biomedia to take the load of what you're giving it. Mm. He said, you should be fine. And like you say, touch wood. It's all going, it's all going well so far. Yeah, well, look at the tank, mate. You know, it's crystal clear, it's perfect. All the fish are eating healthy, aren't they? So yeah. you're doing something right. And what, um, you running chemical filtration, what's in the bags then, mate? Right, so in the bag, there's a company out there called Countryside Aquatic. Yeah, I know, yeah, cool. Yeah. And they, um, they've got a nitrate remover. Yeah. So that's just a nitrate remover bag. I, I suppose every three months, I regenerate them into salt. Yeah. And that's just because of my nitrate that comes out of my tap. It's nearly 30. Right, okay, yeah. So it's, it's high. 
but the fish have got used to it. But yeah, I just bought a little bit of something to try and help it, help it keep it down. Mm. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard really good things about him. I'm actually talking to him on Instagram as, as we speak. Okay, this, yeah, uh, yeah, last yeah. couple of weeks, he's going to send me over a few bits to try. So, does all the special resin stuff, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, apparently the new one out, the new one coming out soon called Nitro Pure. I think it's meant for a marine setup, but it will work on fresh water. Right. But it doesn't need to be regenerated. Okay. So it's just to put it in there, forget it, and leave just leave it. it yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, so, that's what we all like us fish keepers, isn't it? Make our life easier. That's it. <laughs> That's absolutely wicked, mate. Now the sump's perfect size for the tank, isn't it? Yeah. When when you actually look at the size of the sump compared to the tank, you're like, wow, man! Like, it's a massive filter, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And you've got obviously in the uh, the socks. What are you just running? Just some filter wool. Yeah. Here? Just filter wool. Yeah. Like once a week. Once a week, whip it out, change that over. Yeah. Yeah. It just keeps the water crystal clear. Just fine tunes the water, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I love filter wool, mate. I, I run it in all my systems. Let's do a uh, side view of the tank as well. So Craig's got this in his kitchen. His kitchen's over here, and this is his sort of lounge seating area over here. So you've got a nice chair you can sit on at night, That's can't you? It. With a beer or a gin and tonic or whatever, and just sit here and chill and watch the fish, man. Yeah, it's lovely, mate. Oh, mate. Yeah, okay, but yeah, go for it. What's the lighting then, Craig? What, what lights right, you running? Right here, two real simple Fluval Aquasky, 50 quid each. Yeah. I was thinking, this is this has been reinforced with timber, so I was thinking, right, I could do something over and Hang and take off, yeah. But then I had one of these, and they're all Bluetooth, I could change, do whatever I want with them. So yeah. I thought I'd try another one, and they, they ended up being perfect. Mate, it's working out, yeah. isn't it? It's working out perfect. Just off two little lights like that, you think you're running something big on top, yeah. So I can change I can change every single setting on them. At yeah. night time, round about seven o'clock, the blue kicks in more. Yeah. Um, I'll take down the white, and at night time, it just gets more and more, more and more blue. Nine o'clock, pings goes off, so mm. I haven't had to touch it. That's perfect. Do you know what's making a huge difference as well? Obviously, there's no substrate. Yeah. So you're, you're, getting, a lot of you're getting a lot more reflection, yeah. yeah. If you had a black sand in there like mine, it'd look real dark, you know? But it's making a big difference. And see, so you've got a, we've got a wave pump over here as well, haven't you? Yeah, just a little wave maker on the side. And that, that just helps stir it up. Yeah, lovely, man. Yeah, it's perfect. It's all, it's all to do with flow, just getting everything back into the sump, innit? All the filters. That's it. We missed out your um, your bircher. Yeah. He's massive, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big boy. I'd say he's probably pushing 18 inch. Yeah, definitely. Where he come from a little tank before I got him, when I first got him, he was biting his own tail, he was chasing himself around in a circle. Yeah, like a, sure. like a puppy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure why he was doing that, but to be fair, he, he stopped doing that now. He's, he's probably a bit stressed in the other tank, probably, you know, you, you yeah. said it was quite a small setup, so that's probably what was, that, what was going on. I've forgotten the name of it. It's an ornate, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right. I've got the same one, I'm pretty sure, mate, but mine is about half the size. Usually the the um the fin colour and the back colour is a bit pops a bit more than that, it's a bit more orangey. Yeah. But he's alright. It's probably because he's blending in with the substrate. Yeah, maybe. You know? Oh, he's a massive fish, mate. Yeah, he's a big boy. When when you look at him in the stores, you think, oh, they're not gonna get that big. To... <laughs> That's how big they get, isn't it? He's probably got a bit more to go in him as well, isn't he? Yeah. So, so what are you feeding there, mate? What have right, we got? So in here, I've got five king prawns, raw. Yeah. And I've got five mussels, cut up. Oh, right, lovely. So, oh. usually it's the other way around. And the little one is down that end, and the big ones are down this end. So yeah. what I do is I feed about three quarters down here. Yeah. And then I try and aim a quarter of it at her. Right. But they're around the other way today, so let's just see what happens. Yeah, go on. Discus love the mussel, big time. They'll yeah. even get stuck underneath a, a yeah. ray for the mussels. I can see them, yeah, look. Yeah. <laughs> look, the ray's disappeared under the other one, look. <laughs> well, they're loving that, aren't they? Yeah. And how many uh, times a week do you feed uh, the frozen stuff then, Craig? So, I try and give it them once a day. Yeah. When I look at my stingrays, they all seem a bit fat compared to everybody else's. Yeah. But I give uh, Massive Ward Elite Carnival pellets. Yeah, I know, yeah. 
just because they're a bit smelly. Um, and then I try and do the prawn and the mussel at night. And depending on how much they go for it, depends whether I give them a bit more, a little bit less. But I slowly stepped it up. It was about four, four of each, but now I've just stepped it up to five. Right. Yeah, it's all gone within a couple of minutes. Yeah, hasn't it? But to be fair, the big stingray would eat all of that on his own every time. Yeah, anyway. def definitely, mate. Mate, I'll chuck in a whole, see that tub? Yeah. I'll chuck in a whole thing full to the brim with mussels. Arrow. Yeah, mate, they, within three minutes, all gone. Yeah. And the birch has come out, and obviously the clown larches eat all the little bits. Yeah. But then, obviously, the more food you're chucking in, the more maintenance you've got to do, you yeah. know? So, but it's got to be done. Yeah, exactly. And lots of people say, oh, how much that must cost, but Fish yeah, you, you've got to pay for it, anyway. They've got to have the right food. Well, if you want the colours to pop and you want the fish to stay healthy, they need the stuff like that, don't they? So we don't eat mussels at all. He eats Mario's worms. I don't get cut of them. What's that, the arrow? Yeah. He's not interested in it whatsoever. I've tried. I've tried starving him out a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, not interested. He'd only eat Mario's. That birch is crazy, man. The size of it is massive. Really nice to see the stingrays with the bircher as well. What you'll probably find, Craig, as he gets older, he start eating pellets, prawns, and everything. The arowana is a weird fish, mate. Yeah, they get the um. And he, puts, he puts him in his mouth. Spits him out, yeah. And then not interested. Yeah. So that's, that's his little bowl. Oh, yeah, the worms. Let's take it this way, bro. All alive as well. Yeah. <laughs> my missus is going mental. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Lots of people don't like them. We went to New York at Christmas, so I left my mum in charge of the tank. Oh, no. She was like, I'll do it all, but I ain't touching them. No, no. They can bite you, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, there he goes, look. Absolutely loves that, doesn't he? Yeah, again, he'll go, he'll have eight, eight of these quite easily. It's so fun, isn't it, feeding the fish? Beautiful fish, man. Completely different to all of mine. I mean, I haven't seen it, I haven't seen any more in the flesh. I've seen little ones in the fish shop. Yeah. Then when I went to get him, as I said, he was the cheapest one out of probably a hundred that are in the shop. The place was called Planet Arowana. Yeah, I know, yeah, D David, I'm, I'm going down there in March to do a video. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so that's where I see, that's where I see the first fully grown black diamond that I've ever seen, like in the flesh. Yeah. And he's got, so, he's got this, it's this, this big. Yeah, it's big disc. It's ginormous. Fully grown one of these, he's got turtles, he's got the lot. And I think, well, he said you can trade, but I'm never getting rid of her. No. So if I ever get another tank, I think I'd spend the money and try and get something that's a bit, a bit redder. Mm. Yeah, but give her time, yeah. or him time. Honestly, give it a year or so, I think you'd be amazed. They, they do change a lot. It's got a perfect tail though, everything's perfect about it. Yeah. The, the, the thing with arowanas is, especially the Asian arowanas, what I've found, I know I don't, but you should keep them on their own. Uh, okay. I've got a blue base on his own in the six foot tank in the fish room, and he's perfect now. All yeah. his fins are back together, do you know what I mean? When you put them together, they do, when you're obviously at work, you don't see it, you know, but they do nip at each other and stuff like that. But at the moment, I haven't got the room. That's it, isn't it? But they're doing fine, obviously the water, I've done the massive water changes and cleaned out the filters regularly. But the massive thing I made, a big mistake with my tank was, not, I didn't put sump on it. Yeah. I've got FX6s on it, you know, and I've got a four foot tank opposite it with a sump and it's the easiest thing I've ever done, you know. But I am actually getting another tank built for the fish room, yeah. emptying that tank and Dom's going to put a sump on the tank for me. Yeah. So I'm going to drain it. Drill it. Drill it out and then he's going to put a proper sump on it That's for me. It. If it can be done, it can be done. So. Yeah. Yeah, no reason why not. Scary if you've never done it before. Even yeah. down to plumbing that. There's different ways people do different things. They say seal this bit, don't seal that bit. Yeah. I did have, I did, when I was doing a water change, I used to um, back off the vape, back the gate valve. Yeah. To stop the water going out of the weir. And I made the pipework so loose one day, boof, 
just went off the bottom. So oh, I only yeah. lost what was in the weir. Yeah. Like it was a big puddle. Yeah, I bet it was, yeah. yeah. It was a big, big puddle. So now I've learned to do it, so I don't touch that whatsoever. Yeah. I'm yeah, it's something scary if you haven't done yeah, it, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't know what to do. It only lasted for about 30 seconds, but I thought tank, tank's empty and tank's yeah. empty, and but That's I it. can't. No. Because it can only get what goes yeah, over. Yeah, and it goes to the weir, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's daunting, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's, it's a lot of water, isn't it? Yeah. I've, I've always had mates come around mine going, mate, what happens if your tank sort of goes? I said, well, if it goes, it goes. But yeah. like, what, what are you going to do? You know, it's just what we... Get every towel out. Yeah, get every towel out. Yeah, open the back doors up and push it out, push it out of the house, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Touch wood, mate. Yeah, that, it never happens, exactly. you know. Well, I'm going to have to have you back because I'm sure within a year there's either going to be a big tank in the new extension or it's going to be back on that side wall. Yeah, I think, I think this wall, mate. So, I like it because it's not in the sun. Yeah. So on that side there, there's going to be a bifold on the end, so there's going to be quite a lot of light coming that way. Yeah. Whereas the sun moves around this side, so that's a dark wall. I think it's perfect, mate. TV's not going to be out there, it'll be out there, so I think I'll, I'll get a table pushed down there. So what is that wall, 12, 12 foot? Well, yeah, I've got 12 foot gap in Mate, you could have a serious tank there, man. Yeah. And you go, you go quite... I, as well. Yeah, I think I'll make it over click the window just so I try and get myself a three foot. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely. Gonna, it's going to be a big tank. I mean, there were six of us. There were six of us on this and we, sh we struggled. I know, I know, mate. Trust me, I've, I've lifted them, man. What, what glass you got on this? You, well, the thing is, they're double based, that's why they're so heavy. Yeah, you know? so I went, this has got the OptiClear all the way around. Just yeah, it's, I can see that, yeah. yeah. Well, just looking at it. Look, if I put the camera there, it, there's nothing there, there's no water there. Yeah. Basically, it's just crystal good, and you've just fed them as well. So, you can the, the, the opti white makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it takes the iron out of the glass, doesn't it? That's it. And for the sake of the, the little bit of expense. Nah, it's well worth it, mate. And then what would you do with this one? Would you keep this one somewhere else? Well, or? I think this looks like it could be the pup tank. Yeah. So. Yeah, just have to grow up. Yeah. It's always good to have a couple of tanks set up anyway, you know, especially if you're mad on a hobby like you are. Yeah. So what I've heard a lot of the time is once the male impregnates the female, they have to get the male out of the way anyway. Yeah. Because he'll just carry on hounding them even when they're pregnant. Yeah. Like hormone in the water or pheromone or something. So a lot of people remove the male mm. and they usually impregnate all the females at the same time. Right. So it's not going to be for a while yet, but I need something else decent size so to go in. So I could probably section that out, have him and the pups in there yeah. and then leave the girls in the big one. It's a good idea, mate. Well, when I videoed that JW Tanks, his female's been impregnated, you reckon? So, well, that was two, three weeks ago now, so we'll find out soon, Yeah. you know? He got, he's got a couple of nice black diamonds in there. Yeah. But it means you're doing something, right? If they're gonna start breeding, you know, it means the water's good, doesn't it? And they're well, happy. Yes, I so, fingers crossed. And what are you running? Just got a little air pump here, just for a bit of oxygen, yeah? yeah. Yeah, I think I'd like to upgrade that. I, I like the dangly ones that hang from the top. Yeah. Well, I've got the pond ones. And you could hang it from the top. Big yeah. pond ones. I'll tell you what, mate. They let off the most oxygen. Yeah. They're massive things. Just, I think I bought them from Amazon. Just big blue thing like this big. They let off so much. And you could literally, like you say, just dangle that down in the middle of the tank there or whatever. Yeah. And then your wave pump's just going to blow all the oxygen around the tank. It's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Now, you should be proud, mate. The tank's lovely. Absolutely beautiful, mate. And I love how it's all open. Yeah, me too. Lots you know? Of people say, what, why nah. blocked it off? You see what's going on? I like seeing it. Yeah, yeah. I like to see what's going on. Yeah. I'll do exactly the same on the new tank as well. Yeah, it looks wicked. Well, you, you ain't got young kids running about and playing. No. I couldn't have this. My, my son would be in there in seconds, mate. Or oh, there'd be something going in that something, yeah. Yeah, he'd be putting toys in it and all sorts, you know? Turning the, turning the, in it. Yeah, turning the pumps off and everything, so. Maybe in a few years' time I might be able to do it, but not right now. That's no, absolutely epic, mate. Thanks for having me over, man. I really appreciate it. No, I'm honoured that you come see my tank after watching you on TV so much. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Thank you. And after this, guys, we've got to go and have a look at your mate's tank, haven't we? Yeah, that's it. So he's got a friend, what is he? Just across the road, isn't he? Ooh. And he's got some mad marine setups we're going to go and have a look at. So that should be interesting. 
So guys, this is an add-on from that video because I forgot to say we're actually going over to his mate's, um, I think his name is Chris, Chris's house, to go and video his uh, marine setup. So I thought we'd add this on to the end of the video. I'm actually editing the video as we speak. So I hope you enjoyed that video anyway. Um, plenty more to come soon as well. There's lots of um, tanks I've got to go and visit in the UK. So um, thanks for watching. As always, like and subscribe to my channel. Ding the notification bell and uh, keep it real everyone.